Shalom and welcome to Davar Word. It is my pleasure to share with you what I have discovered in my walk so that we can learn and grow together. A name is an identity to call someone. A name is to make reference to someone. It can also describe a character or personality. A name can be used to introduce the reputation of someone. Names are the story of our spiritual potential as well as life's mission here on earth, our identity. Names are convenient not just to distinguish one individual from another, but they define us. Names matter. What is your name? Did you live up to it? Genesis 5 verse 2 says, And God called their name Adam. Male and female, He created them, and God blessed them, and He called their name Adam in the day that He created them. Adam named all the animals, but it was God who personally named him. Genesis 17.5 No longer will your name be Abram, but your name will be Abraham. God would make Abraham the father of a multitude of nations. Genesis 22.17 God would bless Abraham and multiply his descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore. The sand is Abraham's physical descendants which we can see and touch with our hands. Physical is something tangible. These are the Jewish people from the bloodline of Abraham. The stars of heaven, we cannot touch them. These are Abraham's spiritual children, non-Jews. Genesis 17.15 You are no longer to call her Sarai. Her name will be Sarah. Previously, Sarai was barren. Only after God renamed her Sarah, she could have a child. God gave Sarai the breath in the letter He. God breathed into both Abraham and Sarah and they received his breath. They found themselves fruitful at the age of 100 for Abraham and 90 for Sarah. Sarah's youth was renewed that even Abimelech, king of the Philistines, desired her. Abimelech is not a name but a title. Genesis 16.11 You shall name him Ishmael. Sarai mistreated Hagar because Hagar began to belittle Sarai. Hagar ran away. Even though Hagar behaved badly, belittled Sarai and ran away, God still was kind to her. He revealed himself as the God who sees. He still looked after Hagar. God went looking for Hagar and found her by the spring of water in the wilderness. The name Hagar can be pronounced Hagar, meaning the stranger or the foreigner. She was Egyptian, not of Israel, and yet God showed her loving kindness and care by naming her son. Genesis 17.19 You must name him Isaac, meaning laughter. God would establish his covenant with Isaac as an everlasting covenant for his offspring. God said that the covenant would not come through Ishmael, but through Isaac. Genesis 32.29 and Genesis 35.10 No longer will your name be Jacob, for your name will be Israel. Genesis 25 Now Esau and Jacob were twins. Esau came out and they, his parents, Isaac and Rebekah, named him Esau. Afterward, his brother came out with his hand holding on to Esau's heel, and the Hebrew says, he called him Jacob. Why was it that they called the first one Esau, but he called him Jacob? Scholars say that the he has to be God. Otherwise, why would Rebekah not have a say in naming the younger son Jacob? You have heard that Jacob was called a cheat and a supplanter, someone who wrongfully or illegally seizes and holds the place of another. If we read the scripture very carefully, no one called Jacob a cheat and a deceiver, except for Esau and Isaac. Earlier on, 
Esau had sold his birthright to Jacob for a bowl of red lentil soup. The sale was fair and square. There was no haggling of price and there was no argument. It was agreed very peacefully. But when it was time to bless the firstborn, Esau should have told his father, I am no longer firstborn. I already sold that to Jacob for a bowl of soup. He is firstborn now. You should bless him. Esau was the deceiver who tricked his father, not Jacob. Now Isaac also said that Jacob deceived him. This was because Isaac was physically blind and also spiritually blind. He was driven by his fleshly appetite and loved food. He did not know of the sale and transaction between the two brothers. And now, the position of firstborn was exchanged between them. The name Jacob does not mean deceiver. In Hebrew, deceiver is Ramai. Yaakov is related to Akev, which is heel or chasing after the reward of God. Then a man wrestled with Jacob until the break of dawn. When the man saw that he could not win Jacob, he struck the socket of his hip. So he dislocated the socket of Jacob's hip. Then the man said, Let me go, for the dawn has broken. Why? Because no man can see God and live. Dawn was coming. The sun was coming up. Light and revelation was coming. Jacob was not supposed to see the face of God. But Jacob said, I won't let you go unless you bless me. Then the man said to him, What is your name? Jacob, he said. Then he said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but rather Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men, and you have won. So Jacob named the place Peniel, for I've seen God face to face, and my life has been spared. God changed Solomon's name to Yedidiah, beloved of the Lord. 2 Samuel 12.25, he called him Yedidiah. We know that David and Bathsheba committed adultery. Their first son died as a punishment and judgment from God. Solomon was born to them after. God forgave them and even loved their son Solomon. God granted him wisdom and he became the wisest man who ever lived. Solomon, or Yedidiah, composed 3,000 proverbs and wrote 1,005 songs. Isaiah 8.3 Call his name Maher Shalal Hashbaz. When Isaiah's wife bore a son, the Lord said to me, Call his name Maher Shalal Hashbaz, which means, To speed to the spoil, he hasteneth the prey. Hosea had three children. Hosea 1.4 Call him Jezreel. Jezreel meaning that God would avenge the blood of the massacre at Jezreel and punish the royal house of King Jehu. God would put an end to the kingdom of Israel. Jezreel means God will plant or God will sow. Hosea 1.6 Name her Lo Ruhamah. It means no mercy. For I will no longer show love to Israel, that I should at all forgive them. The second child of the whore, a girl, was called Lo Ruhamah, because the Lord decided not to be merciful to the house of Israel any longer. Hosea 1 9. Call him Lo Ami. Then the Lord said, Call him Lo Ami, which means not my people. For you are not my people, and I am not your God. The third child, a boy, was given the name Lo-Ami, which meant the Eternal no longer considered Israel his people. Luke 1.13 You will name him John. This was John the Immerser. John's father, Zechariah, found it difficult to believe the angel Gabriel when Gabriel brought the news that a child would soon be coming. Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth were barren and by this stage they were quite elderly and past the age of bearing children. Zechariah was unable to speak so that he could self-reflect rather than to argue with the messenger of God, Gabriel. Zechariah's name, Zachariah, means remember God. Elizabeth's name, Elisheva, means God's promise. 
In Matthew 16:18 and John 1:42, Yeshua renamed Simon Peter. You are Peter. Simon's name was Shimon, meaning to listen. Yeshua gave him a name that was a solid, steady, steadfast foundation rock. Yeshua even said, On this rock I will build my church, and the powers of death shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. With this name, Peter received new authority and security. When we read about him in the book of Acts and his letters, 1st and 2nd Peter, he was really steady as a rock. When he was crucified, he even said he was unworthy to die the same way Yeshua did and requested to be upside down. This is not from the scriptures but from other extra-biblical books. Mark 3.17, Yeshua gave Jacob and John the name Boanerges, which is sons of thunder. Perhaps they had characters like thunder. In Luke 9.54, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy the Samaritans? Perhaps they had a temper, quick to be angry, or it could mean that they were fervent and very zealous, thunderous. Isaiah 7.14 says of Yeshua, Call his name Immanuel. Immanu means with us. El means God. He is God with us. Matthew 1.21 You shall call his name Yeshua, and she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Yeshua, for he shall save his people from their sins. His very name is recorded upon our hand. John 15, 4 Remain in me and I will remain in you. Our name is written in the middle of his hand. Isaiah 49, 16 Behold, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Revelations 2, 17 We have written on a white stone our new name. Revelations 3, 12 on him I will write the name of my God and my own new name. Revelations 19.11 He that sat upon the white horse was called faithful and true. Revelations 2.17 He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. To the one who overcomes, the Lord wants us to overcome any struggle, any hardship, any persecution, any difficulty. To the one who overcomes, he will give him a white stone and written on the stone a new name that no one knows except the one who receives it. The new name will be tailored perfectly to the race or the struggle we have here on earth. No one knows the name because no one knows our own personal struggle, the deepest secret emotions that we cannot even describe to other people. Revelations 3.12 The one who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he will never leave it. And on him, I will write the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God and my own new name. All of us should look forward to this reward. We will receive the name given to us by God himself. God is going to name us because He is our Father. When we reach the kingdom, we will understand what our life mission was all about and God is going to give us beautiful new names. Beloved, Redeemed, Friend, Chosen One, Precious One, Overcomer and many others that I can't even think of. This is one of God's precious rewards for us, a new name that He Himself has chosen for us. Let's pray. Thank you, God, that the name of Yeshua is the name above every other name that gives people salvation. At the name of Yeshua, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that He is Lord over all creation and Lord over all the earth. The name of Yeshua is higher than cancer, higher than heartbreak, higher than any disease. It means anointed one. God is our salvation. We worship this name. 
We give thanks to your identity, your reputation and your character. We thank you for calling us by name and also for giving us a brand new name when we meet you face to face in the kingdom. In the glorious name and character of our Lord and Messiah Yeshua, Prince of Peace. Amen. Thank you for joining me. I pray that this message inspires and challenges you. God bless you and your family. Shalom. Shalom.